Hey, what's up? Here is a situation that I find myself in frequently. It's like 6 p.m. and I'm hungry and desperately want pan-style pizza. The problem is that I didn't mix dough a few hours ago or a few days ago, and here I am in the present moment, pizza-less and without options. So to help solve this very frequently occurring problem, today I'm gonna show you guys how to make a very respectable, crispy, bready pan-style pizza in just about an hour. To get started, I'll grab a small saucepan and then an ice cold domestic beer. I'll measure 180 grams of that beer into the pot and then I'll move that over to the stove to warm it up a little bit. Why beer? Well, beer is essentially wet bread and is full of the yeasty flavors that we associate with long, slow bread style fermentation. But since this dough is only gonna be getting about 45 minutes of rise, it's not gonna make very much flavor on its own. So the beer kind of approximates that. By the way, water is a perfectly good sub here if beer isn't an option for you. Once my beer is good and warmed up, I'll move it over to a medium bowl and then add in 10 grams of instant yeast. Yes, that's a lot of yeast, but more yeast equals more gas and we need this dough to get gassed up super quickly. An added benefit here is that using more yeast makes the dough taste yeastier. Next, I'll add in five grams of sugar, 15 grams of olive oil, and nine grams of salt. Before I add flour here, I'll stir all that to combine because getting the yeast and salt dissolved ahead of time makes getting the dough homogenous by hand a lot easier. Finally, in goes 280 grams of bread flour, then I'll jump into the bowl with a sturdy spoon and stir everything to combine. Once the dough is clumped up to the point where stirring is no longer possible, like this, I'll switch over to the soaking wet hand tool and then jump back into the bowl to give the dough a little bit more mixing to finish it off. That's just a simple knead and fold move here. I'm not really looking to develop any gluten. I'm really just trying to work out any clumps and to get things evenly combined. And there we go. It doesn't look like much, but I promise it's gonna be beautiful pan pizza soon enough. I'll throw on a lid and ferment it here on the counter for 15 minutes. 15 minutes later, thanks to double yeast, this dough has already risen by about half, and now I need to develop that gluten structure. To do that, I'll give the dough the classic SBF, or strength building fold. That's a pull till I meet resistance, followed by a fold over and rotation. I'll repeat that four times or so, then I'll finish by simultaneously rounding and tucking this dough into a nice tight ball. It seems wild, but for a lot of different bread doughs, especially ones that are lower on enrichments like oil and butter, this hand mix and fold maneuver can stand in for pretty much the entirety of the mechanical work done by a stand mixer. It's pretty sick. Now, the lid goes back on and I'll ferment this for 15 more minutes. 15 minutes later, we've just about doubled from our original size and now it's time to put this dough into a pan. For that, I'll grab my largest cast iron pan, which happens to be a 12 inch Food Network brand pan that I got at Kohl's and I really love it. I'll link to it in the description if you're interested. If you don't have a 12 inch pan, I've made sure that this dough will also work split evenly between two eight inch brownie pans like this. Shout out to Adam Ragusea for the original idea on putting pizza in a brownie pan. I'll link to his video on cake pan pizza below. Now I'm going to liberally spray my cast iron pan here with some olive oil. Then I'll grab my dough and place it in the pan with the seam side facing up. Next, I'll grease my fingers with the pan oil and then I'll start to degas the dough and push it outwards to fill the pan. By the way, if you don't have a 12 inch cast iron pan, I'll leave an edited version of this recipe for a 10 incher in the description. Once the dough is pushed out to about 10 inches, it's going to start to snap back. So I'll cover it with the lid and let it rest for 10 more minutes while I preheat my oven to 550F and then quickly bust out the very simple toppings for this pizza. First, I'll need to make the sauce. So I'll grab a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes and into that add 100 grams of tomato paste, 20 grams of sugar, 12 grams of salt, two grams of onion powder, two grams of garlic powder, one gram of dried oregano, one gram of dried basil, and a strong pinch of chili flakes. Now my immersion blender goes in and I'll spin this sauce until the herbs are well broken down and everything is well combined about 30 seconds or so. I'll mention that this is enough sauce to make this recipe at least three times over, so I'll freeze the other two parts and have an even lower barrier to entry the next time I want pan pizza. For the cheese, I've got a half a pound of full fat aged mozzarella that I got from the deli counter, and I'm grating it on the largest hold sides of my box grater. I prefer the flavor of 100% full fat mozz on my pan pizza, but if you wanted to add a little bit more ooey gooey cheese pull and some piquant flavor, I'd say sub in 30 to 40% provolone. Lastly, let's sort out the peps. For that, I've got a stick of pepperoni instead of pre-sliced because the stick allows me to slice these as thick as I want. Thicker slices curl up and fry around the edges in a really pleasant way, like Detroit-style pizza. Plus, like pan pizza, thicker pepperonis are just meatier and more substantial, so the two go together really well. Once I've got my peps, cheese, and sauce all sorted out, I'll grab my dough and stretch it one more time to make sure it's spread all the way to the edge. I'll also dock it with my fingertips a little bit to make sure that the gas is spread evenly throughout and there aren't any huge pockets of air that might bubble up and ruin the pizza while it bakes. 
Now, instead of proofing this more, I'm gonna go straight into building the pizza. But first, I'm gonna thank the sponsor of this video, Fly by Jing. Fly by Jing makes insanely delicious sauces that are meant to go on basically all foods. After using their triple threat trio for the past few weeks, I can confirm they taste really good on basically everything. And right now, they're my current hot sauce of choice. In the trio, you get the mala spice mix, which is a savory blend of herbs and spices. Think of curry powder smashed up with a ton of umami stuff like seaweed and mushroom powders. Next is the zong sauce. It's a little bit sweet, a little bit spicy, and just like the mala spice mix, it's mega umami. This is the obvious choice for me to put on top of some stir fried ramen noodles or just use it as a glaze with some meats. Finally, my personal favorite is the all natural Sichuan chili crisp. I usually put this on my fried eggs in the morning, or if I'm having avocado toast, that's a natural pairing too. It's savory, it's spicy, and adds a ton of interesting texture to anything that you put it on. And the heat is really well balanced too. It doesn't like give you heartburn or blow up your mouth first thing in the morning. So to pick up the triple threat or any of Flyby Jing's products, head to flybyjing.com and use code BRIAN15 to get 15% off your order. The link is in my description. Again, that's BRIAN15 for 15% off. Now, the first thing down is gonna be four to five hefty spoonfuls of sauce about a half cup, maybe more. This style of pizza can take a lot of toppings, you guys, so be generous and go heavier than you would for a thin crust pizza. I'll make sure that's spread from edge to edge, then I'll drop down my shredded full fat mozzarella. Again, that's about a half pound or 250 grams, and I'm using just about all of it. Don't skimp on the cheese. Lastly, I'm gonna drop down 40 to 50 of those thick sliced peps. I like to spread them out organically like this so that I get some bites that have two or three peps and then some bites that have no peps. Contrast is a good thing when it comes to pan pizza. Now, I'm gonna let this pizza rise fully dressed for 10 to 15 more minutes on my counter while my oven finishes preheating. 10 minutes later, this pizza has proofed up quite a bit and now it's ready to bake. So I'll load it into my 550F oven and bake it for 16 to 18 minutes. Notice that I've kept my pizza steel in the box. That's gonna help transfer heat to the bottom of the pan and create a crisper, more fried bottom crust. Halfway through, I'll come back and rotate the pan because my oven front is hotter than my oven back, and then I'll bake for another six to eight minutes or until the cheese is well browned and the pepperonis are curling and crisping around the edges. And after about one hour and 10 minutes from when I started this entire process, I'm actually pulling pizza out of the oven. And yeah, that's a very respectable looking pizza pie for a very low expenditure of time and effort. But Bri, what about the brownie pan pizzas? Well, they look pretty great. The process here is exactly the same as the cast iron, except for instead of one 12 inch pizza, you get two eight inch pizzas. Keep in mind though that the brownie pan's metal walls are thinner, and so you're gonna have a less crispy, less fried dough, but this pizza is still miles better than anything you should go buy at a chain pizzeria. As far as the fried bottom goes on the cast iron version, you can see that it's taken on some really nice golden color and it's nicely crisped up. Sure, more fermentation would have yielded a better bottom crust over Overall, but for only 45 minutes of fermentation, I am very happy with this product. You guys, for me, pan pizza is something that I crave in an almost primal way, but I rarely do the planning necessary to make it possible, so this recipe really helps me scratch that itch. The dough is really flavorful considering the shortcuts that we've taken. There's crispy fried pepperonis on there, rich melty cheese, and a robust flavorful sauce with just a hint of sweetness and dried herb. I really hope you try it soon. Let me know in the comments if you do. Let's eat this thing.